We've got two breaks tonight. We're going to do a master case of Revolution Basketball, but before we get to that, we've got a pair of multi-sport jerseys to take care of. But before we do any of that, we're going to go over a little bit of information, make sure we're all on the same page about all the 411. So first up, feedback automated. Anytime you leave positive feedback for me, you are instantly going to get the same in return. And the second thing, there is a big thank you. Always appreciate you being here, bidding, breaking, hanging out with me, keeping me company. We're taking a look next at what's coming up in the days ahead. So tomorrow, uh, or rather next week, let's start with that. Next week is another week where we have no new releases. This week we had the one on Friday. Next week we were supposed to have one on Friday, but ah, yeah, they took it away. We don't have it anymore. So um, we're going to mix in a few off nights. Sunday night, tomorrow night, and Monday night, both off nights. Tuesday night, we're going to open three TriStar Game Changers autographed baseballs, and we'll open a third Master Case of Revolution Basketball. On Wednesday night, we're going to break a case of Contenders Football. Veteran Base does not ship in that break. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. Thursday night, we're going to open a half case of Leaf autographed football jerseys. And that's the back half of a case, if I remember correctly. Thursday night will be a fourth master case of Revolution Basketball. Friday, right now, I have listed three TriStar Series 10 autographed baseballs and a pair of multi-sport jerseys. But there will be some other auctions added in there. We'll probably just do a night that's either all memorabilia or all free shipping stuff, that kind of thing. So, And then Saturday night, a week from tonight... And Sunday night a week from tomorrow night will once again be off nights. So that is what the days ahead look like. Here's what you need to know about tonight's breaks. So the multi-sport jerseys, they are up first. If you hit one of the jerseys in that break, you can expect that it will ship out the door and be on the way to you no later than Saturday the 25th, which is a week from today. Now it will may go sooner, may go a lot sooner, shouldn't go any later than that. If you are in that multi-sport jersey break and you get skunked and you are not the one who's lucky enough to hit one of those two jerseys, your consolation card or cards typically would be held to ship with your next package just because it is a free shipping break. If you want it sent sooner, hit me up on eBay and let me know. I'll take care of it for you. Our paid shipping break tonight is the master case of Revolution Basketball. I'm anticipating to get it out the door uh, on Tuesday. And there is no mail on Monday, just as a reminder. So no delivery, no pickup. Maybe they do express mail, but regular mail, no delivery or pickup. Because of Martin Luther King Day. So probably Tuesday, Revolution Basketball should be on the way. And I think all the teams will have cards coming to them from that break. So we don't have to worry about consolation cards there. So first up is a pair of 2019 Leaf Autograph Multisport jerseys. The spots were sold by the first letter of the last name. So Jack Nicholas would be an N. Tom Brady would be a B. Serena Williams would be a W, for example. I don't think there's such a thing as a Serena Williams jersey, but you get the idea. Or a Jack Nicholas one, for that matter. Everything we're opening tonight ended tonight on eBay, Saturday night, the 18th of January. And, of course, in this first break, you'll see first letter of the last name, and then the winning bidder across from each of those. If you are here for Revolution Basketball, hold tight. This doesn't take us very long, and then you'll get a chance to see your name up in lights in a second. Last little piece of business, you will notice the background got blurry. That is intentional. I like to look at our cards up pretty closely, so I manually set the focus, so that's what that is. Jay Allen is here. You said you have the letter G in this break. All right. Well, let's see if we can have some luck for you here with the letter G. Well, first up, we have the letter T. Brian Trottier. And, well, I'm trying to get it where you can see it. <laughs> There is the Leaf COA, and there's our signature, the Hall of Fame inscription down there at the bottom, and a Leaf hologram authentication sticker. So first jersey out of the multi-sports goes to the T's for Brian Trottier. 
Crystal's here. Hi, Crystal. And so is Jesse. Hi, Jesse. We already said hi to Jay Allen. All right, here comes our second multi sport jersey. It's upside down, but that's all right. We'll leave it upside down and cut the seal. Probably easier to cut the seal that way anyway. And it goes to the R's. We have Mel Renfro on tap with this one. It is JSA certified. You'll see the JSA certificate there. And looks like uh, we've got another little Hall of Fame inscription on there as well. And there's your JSA uh, sticker certification. So we have Mel Renfro going to the R's. And Brian Trottier here going to the T's. So there go our two jerseys. Give me a second to get them put out of the way and I will be right back with you. Oh yeah, Josiah, I do remember that. I just, you know, I, I'm always multitasking. I have a habit of just kind of looking over, glancing over, and reading off. I didn't take time to process that, or I probably would have remembered that it wasn't really Crystal, that is Josiah. Sorry about that. You know me, my poor old brain. Okay, so we just had this up there a second ago. Probably everyone saw it. If you didn't see it or you didn't hear me going over it verbally, please take a minute, review the information that you see on the screen, Hit me up with any questions that you might have. So this is a 16 box master case of 1920 Revolution Basketball. This is break number two. Of course, also ended tonight on eBay, Saturday night, the 18th of January. Team names on our left-hand side, winning bidders cross from each team on the opposite side. And of course, a master case is comprised of two separate eight box cases. And that, of course, is how we're going to do them. So we'll take, I'll open the master case, obviously, here in a second. And I'm going to remove both of the eight box cases, but we'll cut through one and go through all of it. Then I'll cut through the other eight, and we'll go through all of that, just so I don't have so much stuff on the table at once, okay? So that's our game plan here. These are really wedged in here. It is not fun extracting them truthfully. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry about the little earthquake there. All right, there's our first one. We'll set our second one aside and I'll uh, haul it back up on the table after we work our way through the first one. So for anyone who might not be familiar with Revolution Basketball and how it works, they don't have guaranteed autographs in these boxes. So in general, we can expect to find somewhere between two and four per eight box in our case. Now typically, we're going to land right about that four number. But every once in a while, you might end up with a little bit less, or very, very rarely, you could end up with a little bit more. But in general, it's probably going to be about four per eight box enter. But of course, the thing that is the more interesting, maybe not the more interesting, but the thing that adds a lot of value, I should say, to Revolution, is the fact that there's lots of fun patterns in here. And some of these numbered patterns can be worth some money. And then our case hit, which actually is not numbered, but is worth a lot of money, is the galactic case hit. And those tend to come out once for every 16 boxes. It, well, in other words, once per master case. So there are, there are a lot of patterns in here. Some of them are numbered, some of them are not. As we go through them, this 
first time. I don't know why I'm having trouble speaking tonight. As we go through it this first time, I will point out to you the various patterns and we'll talk about which ones are numbered and which ones aren't. And we'll flip over a few of the ones that are unnumbered just to demonstrate the fact that they are unnumbered. And then in subsequent boxes, we'll roll right on past those that are unnumbered and focus on just our autographs, our numbered hits, and obviously our case hit. Oh, I just did something, hit something, sorry. Messed up my chat. Now I've got it back. And Jay Allen, I see that you need the Hornets and the Nuggets in here. All right, my friend, I will do my best to get some Hornets and some Nuggets for you. So this is just the base pattern, that kind of, I don't know how to describe it. Looks like shimmer, looks like rain, whatever you want to say it looks like. That is our base pattern. And our base pattern in here is never numbered. Now, um, our hits, right away, we're going to come up with an autograph. So I forgot to get our sleeves out on the table. So you got to give me a second to do that. And then we'll flip it over. The other nice thing about Revolution Basketball is these are hard signed autographs typically. They are generally on card, as is this one for the Atlanta Hawks and Cam Reddish. So one autograph out of our first box, not too bad. This is an example of a vortex insert. We will find lots of these vortex inserts and typically they're not numbered if something varies and we do come across one that is numbered. I will point it out to you and just same as. This is the fractal pattern and even though it's a cool looking pattern, they are not numbered. The fractals are not. So we're flipping those over in this first box, but in subsequent boxes, again, we'll just move right on past fractal since they are not numbered. That's another one. When, when I say move on past them, I mean you're still going to see them. We're just not going to stop and chat about them. A shockwave insert. That's another one we'll see plenty of times before we get out of here. Not numbered on it either, although we may later find some that are. This is Astro, and Astro is fairly plentiful in here, so it is a parallel, but it is another unnumbered parallel, so one that we won't talk about a whole lot in subsequent cases, or boxes rather. Now this one we will talk a little bit more about because that is Starburst, and it's going to be numbered to 75 when we flip it over. And that is Kevin Knox for the Knicks. And as you see up there at the top, it is in fact numbered 275. So we will flip those over always because they're numbered. Another vortex, again, you know, unnumbered stuff. This pattern is groove. We will see lots and lots of groove. Groove is another parallel, but an unnumbered one. So we'll mostly truck on past those. This insert set, uh, Rookie, just Rookie Revolution is what it's called. Jordan Clark is on the front of it. Same as the others, guys. Not numbered, meaning we won't generally spend a lot of time on them. It's Pacers with another Astro. And the Jazz with another Astro. And that finishes up box number one. Now, there are some additional patterns that we haven't seen yet. So when we come across those, I'll let you know. We saw Sunburst. We haven't seen Cubic yet. Cubic is numbered to 50. If we get lucky, we might find a Lava pattern. Those are numbered to 10. Uh, we will most likely find some Cosmics in here. The Cosmics are numbered to 100. There is an Impact pattern, and it is numbered to 149. And, of course, somewhere in our master case, we should find a galactic case hit as well, which, once again, those are unnumbered. But pretty desirable, the case hits. So, the galactics, I mean. So, Louisville beat Duke today. That was right after uh, my Kentucky Wildcats played, and... Kentucky, I don't know what I'm going to do. I mean, we won, but man, I don't know what I'm going to do with my guys. They are all over the map. It's like they just, they play really inconsistently. They did start playing a lot better after Coach Cal got ejected, got a double technical just right there in a row and got himself ejected. <laughs> and they did start playing better after that, so, for whatever that's worth. Maybe he did it on purpose, right? Could have, to get him fired up. 
Well, look at that. Two boxes, two autographs. We're just living right tonight, aren't we? For the Jazz, um, as our autograph here, it is uh, Adrian Dantley for the Utah Jazz. One other thing I should probably point out, although I haven't really seen one yet, we probably are going to see one before it is all said and done. And it is a t uh, players that have been traded. So Phoenix Suns, that's uh, fractal, but we all know those aren't numbered. So sometimes there are players in here that the team on the card does not match the uniform that you see them in. There are some outdated photographs in here. It is always going to go to the team that is listed on the card. So the uniform the player is wearing, if it differs from the team that's noted, it always goes to the team on the card because some of these guys have been traded and they're just using old photographs. Robinson for the Wizards, number to 149. That is impact for Justin Robinson. If I can find an example of one of those traded guys, I'm sure we'll see one before it's all said and done. I'll try and make sure and point it out again. Well, as I say that, right here is one. Huh, how's that for luck? And it's our first cubic pattern, so this should be numbered to 50. But you'll see here that he's in a Grizzlies uniform, but Jazz is noted on the card. There's little video letters there that tell you the date he was traded. And then, of course, Jazz noted there on the back. So that means it goes to the Jazz, not to the Grizzlies. And that was the cubic pattern. And it was, of course, numbered to 50, as you saw there. All right. So, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I left out. There's always so much to think about with Revolution. Many, many, many parallels in here. Jay Allen says it's quiet tonight in chat. Yeah, for sure. Everybody's probably multitasking, watching watching games, watching television, chilling out, you know. Seems it's it's like that a lot on Saturdays, I think. I don't know about where you are, Jay Allen. I know you're in the Carolinas, but I'm not sure what kind of weather you're getting, but we are about to we're about to get a nice little taste of winter weather. We've been kind of unseasonably warm up to this point but we're we had a bunch of rain and wind and nastiness today and then they tell us that the temperatures are really gonna drop by tomorrow so i'm super dreading that <laughs> like really not looking forward to that at all uh, it's just not gonna be fun hi jonathan um this is, we've already broken the jerseys for tonight. This is our uh, Revolution 16 box master case break that we're in right now. So a Vortex insert again. We've already seen those. I don't know why I flipped it other than the fact that I distracted myself momentarily and forgot what I was looking at. <laughs> so sorry. Uh, Cameron Johnson and the Phoenix Suns comes up next. So the Suns with a nice little on-card autograph. And, of course, more Shockwave. We've seen that plenty of times. And what else? Ah, an impact. That should be to 149. That's going to be the Phoenix Suns and Cameron Johnson. Suns are on a Cam Johnson roll tonight, aren't they? A little bit. And another fractal, but keeping in mind that those are not numbered. We're not going to flip it, but it was Steph Curry for the Golden State Warriors. Oh, Jesse, you said, oh, you're learning about revolution. <laughs> yeah, I know. There's a lot to learn with this one. It's so it's atypical of, of Panini products in the fact that it doesn't guarantee autographs or relics or something per box. And really, the, the patterns are almost as interesting as the autographs. Of course, the autographs are still the chase, obviously, but there's definitely money to be made in some of the lower number patterns, too. Jay Allen, you're multitasking getting ready for bed. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I'm a little tired tonight myself. I didn't sleep well last night. I had weird dreams all night. I don't know why.
Did we pull Cameron Johnson last night, J. Allen? You said more dupes from last night. I honestly don't remember pulling Cameron Johnson last night. Maybe we did. I don't know. I stayed up quite late last night as well because I just, I don't know, was having trouble sleeping. So I got a bunch of stuff done way late into the wee hours. And as a result of all the stuff I got done then, I was able to get all of last night's revolution already shipped out. So... I can't even go back and look to tell you because it's already gone. Post office has it. Romeo Langford. That is coming out for the Celtics. That is our fourth autograph out of this particular eight box enter. So it's not super likely that we'll find more in this one. Of course, we've got the whole other eight box enter to go through after we finish this. Pistons with a, an unnumbered fractal. But that's most likely the last of our autographs out of this box anyway. Out of this case, I should say. And number to 149, another example of a card where you need to ignore the uniform that he's in. Look at the team up there. That is the Knicks and Julius Randle with an impact to 149. You said we did pull Johnson last night? Yeah, see, I didn't even remember that. <laughs> I really didn't. And I was up sorting and working on stuff until the wee hours of the morning, so I probably, any memory I had of it, just swept away when I finally did go to sleep. I remember pulling the Zion Redemption, but outside of that, and the Larry Bird. Those are about the only two hits I even remember from last night. But one of the things I like a lot about Revolution is the fact that every autograph in here is hard signed. Now I say that, and now that I've said it, just to make a liar out of me, Panini will probably have a sticker in here somewhere. But traditionally, autographs in here are hard signed. And that's hard to come by these days. Especially in basketball, it seems like it's difficult to get rookie hand signed hard signed autographs few products will have it like certified will have a few uh, and of course revolution has them all that way all the rookies are that way in here usually the veterans are too so here is the first cosmic that we've seen tonight cosmic are numbered to 100 and that's for the atlanta hawks and trey young Another impact for the Cleveland Cavaliers. It is numbered to 149, Kevin Love. Wondering if he's going to get shipped out of town. He desperately wants to be shipped out of town. We know that. <laughs> he's practically begging. Fractal unnumbered for the T-Wolves. He's had some really interesting little displays. Whoops, that was a liftoff die cut. I was just thinking to myself, you know what? We haven't really seen any die cut yet tonight. And we had so many last night. And there's our first one. So for the Jazz, we've got ourselves a die cut Donovan Mitchell. Those are not numbered, but they're still pretty cool. This one looks like it has a minor imperfection down there on that lower right-hand corner. Not anything totally outrageous, but definitely a little something-something happening there. So, yeah, we had a, a lot of die cuts last night. I'm surprised that's the first one we've seen tonight. Judd says we hit Cam Reddish last night, and then, well, we hit him tonight, too, already. So, I guess he's another one that has shown up then in both cases. Maybe we'll get lucky and have Zion show up in both cases, too. That would be nice. If he showed up again tonight, I wouldn't... I would not be sad about that if we find him again. Jay Allen, you said Cam Reddish is coming out in every... Is, has he literally come out in every case book you've seen? If so, then you should always buy that team. <laughs> Because, you know, if he's 
really truly coming out and everyone just buy the hawks every time you know you're gonna hit Jesse, you hit an Akil Harry RPS Contenders Platinum 1 of 1 redemption last night. Sweet. Well, you might not have to wait four to eight months to see what it looks like. It just depends. I mean, since they're in the off season now, it really just depends on how willing Nikhil Harry is to sit down and sign the stuff. But if he sits down and gets it done, you'll get it faster. It always depends on the particular athlete and their willingness to get stuff done fractal suns another cosmic this is for the bulls numbered to 100 you have your rookie kobe white and that was a pelicans uh stars i know he was in a lakers uniform but the team on it was pelicans I said stars is Astro. <laughs> it is literally stars are the pattern, but the pattern name is Astro. For the Lakers, impact to 149, LeBron James. Astro Pistons and Astro Oklahoma City Thunder. Yeah, Jesse, I mean, it might go faster than four to eight months. You just never can, you just never know. It's just so dependent on how willing the signer is to get their stuff done. You know, the reason we don't have to wait on much rookie stuff at the beginning of the season is because they go to... Um, a lot of the players that are going to be featured in any given year's products, they go to the Rookie Premiere. And while they're at the Rookie Premiere, that is when they Panini gets them to sit down and sign a ton of stuff. In other words, Panini will pre-print the signature cards for this particular group of rookies for a bunch of different products. The ones that have to be hard signed. And then they get them to sign them at these rookie premiere events. And they also get them to sign zillions and zillions and zillions of stickers. But sometimes you have a rookie that doesn't get invited to the rookie premiere. In fact, lots of times you do. But for whatever reason, that rookie's autographs show up a lot. And that's why many times they would be redemptions as opposed to other people who are typically live in the early season products. So like Benny Snell, for instance, he wouldn't have been at the rookie premiere, so all of his early stuff was for redemptions. And then probably after he got drafted by the Steelers and whatever, they realized he might see the field, I guess, and got him, got him to sign some other stuff. And then later on, his things became hard-signed autographs inserted in the product. The Wizards and Rue Hachimura, your rookie, on a liftoff die cut. Next up, how about a little sunburst coming up here? Number 275 for your man, Zion Williamson. And it is numbered 6 of 75. I was looking down there. I think it's a little bit miscut, unfortunately. Because you see how you can kind of see the top of what's going to be the next card. There's a little tiny bit of orange down there. And same thing on the front. I think it is ever so slightly miscut, which just blows. But it does look a little miscut to me. Astro there for the Cleveland Cavaliers. I don't really see a ton of miscut stuff these days with so much automation. But every once in a while we do. So a supernova, I don't know if we've talked about these before or not. They're the fr this is fractal is the pattern, but of course fractal are, are unnumbered. And we see a handful of supernovas as we go along throughout the course of the evening. In fact, there's another one right on cue, right? <laughs> Okay, we have got one box left out of our first eight box inner. So when we finish looking at these, we'll be exactly halfway through.
Jay Allen, you got your Reggie Miller redemption in two weeks, even though it said four to eight months. <laughs> yeah, you know, sometimes you get lucky. I mean, I personally pulled a, a Kyrie Irving rookie hit out of, oh, what, what did I pull that out of? Marquee, maybe, which would have been in 2012-13. Because remember, all the 2011-12 rookies were also in the 12-13 products as rookies because of the lockout in 11-12. And I sent that in, this has been a couple years ago by now, but it was of course expired when I turned it in, so I wasn't even sure if I would get it. Not only did I get it, I got it in about 10 days after I submitted it, so sometimes you get lucky. Fractal for the Nets. Fractal for the Nuggets. And that was an Astro for the Thunder. Another Astro, that's the Heat. And the Pacers coming up with a Sunburst, numbered to 75. That is Victor Oladipo. And our first eight box case is finished up. Now it's time to crack into the second one and see what we have waiting for us in it. We got to get some more boxes out of here. Well, I know that Panini always gives a longer time frame, but honestly, you can't go by those time frames. I mean, we were talking about this a little bit the other night. I mean, there are some that... I've been waiting on since 2017, you know, <laughs> so that's way longer than uh, four to eight months, but you just never know. It's dependent on so many factors, but the primary one being when the person will sit down and sign the stuff. Who was it in football? Was it... Um, was one of the 2011 rookies. Was it Julio Jones? Might have been. One of the rookies in football didn't sign any of their stuff. from. They were rookies in 2011. They didn't sign any of their things until 20... I think it was 2015. And I want to say it was Julio Jones. Yeah, so at one point... I guess Panini had just stopped putting in redemptions for them because it became apparent he was never going to sign his stuff, but he did finally do it, but four years later. <laughs> so, you know. Oh, yeah, I've got several I've been waiting on since 2017 that were put in in the correct time frame right after the product came out and never have gotten them back, so... Works that way sometimes. Jay Allen says it was Julio Jones. Okay, that's who I was thinking it was. Sometimes I forget, but yeah, it was, I mean, it was just crazy. Like, why would anybody do that? Because they've got to, you would think they would understand. It's not Panini they're hurting when they do that. It's the people who collect, who you know, spend money to get their autographs. Fractal for the Nets. That's who they're messing over when they say, hey, I think I'll wait four years to sign my stuff. A Rookie Revolution insert that is also a cubic, which means it's going to be numbered 250. And, um, yeah, so not a bad-looking little card there for Nikhil Alexander-Walker. I happen to like the cubic pattern myself. That is Astro for the Knicks. Again, ignore the uniform. It's the team on the card that matters. And we have an autograph. Jarrett Culver for the T-Wolves. That's not much of an autograph, but such as it is, there it is. I was getting ready to open another box. No, we have more to look at. <laughs> See, I saw the autograph. I'm like, oh, yeah, we're done here. <laughs> not quite, right? Not quite. A little bit more to find. Fractal 
for the nets. Or the spurs, rather. Sorry, I said nets. That's fractal for the spurs, not the nets. Well, Jesse, if with it being a one of one, I mean, I'm sure you're going to get it. I would certainly think you're going to get it. I would imagine with them being in the off season, I would think you would get that sooner rather than later. I mean, obviously, they're not playing in the postseason, so that helps you too. It gives them more time to be taking care of their obligations, I guess. Allen said they had stuff all the way back from 2015 being sent out this week. Well, yes and no. But you have to remember that some of that stuff may not have been sitting there since 2015. Yes, it's cards from 2015, but they could have been entered way more recently. Because, you know, Panini still allows you to enter cards that are expired, as far as I know. Whereas Tops no longer does that. Tops used to do the same, but they don't anymore. So, one thing that Tops does that I wish Panini would do is to add the option on the website where you can just check the little box that basically says, Hey, I abandoned this redemption. Send me an equally valued replacement, you know? Hachimura, die cut, wizards. But they do not have that option, but I surely wish they do, because I have several I would do that with. And I know you can track them down. I mean, I'm the king of track them down and get them to switch it out, but it'd be just so much more convenient if you didn't have to. So, ignore the uniform. This is for the Pacers. It is numbered to 75, TJ Warren with a sunburst card. And behind that, we had a little... Golden State Warriors Astro. We're going to have another autograph, obviously. I just shuffled it around to save it for the last because I don't know why. Because I wanted to. I just wanted to. And it is Lonzo Ball. How about that? For the Pelicans. So, New Orleans Pelicans with a Lonzo Ball autograph. What's Lonzo going for these days, anyway? Has anybody looked at that lately? Just out of curiosity, I wonder what his autographs bring. So we've already found two autographs out of this eight box. Haven't seen our case hit yet, though. Our galactic case hit. Still hanging around. Well, hopefully. <laughs> Better be in here anyway, right? I have in the past on the rare occasion have a master case that is missing one but fortunately that doesn't happen very often and we're gonna certainly hope it doesn't happen tonight got one place that sent me one extra box so they sent me a case and a box <laughs> and honestly I probably would have given them the box back if I had caught it before he shipped it but I didn't so I've got just a loose box down there that I'm probably going to open myself see if I have any luck finding anything cool a cubic vortex. This should be numbered to 50. It's cat for the T-Wolves and it is in fact numbered to 50 on the Carl Anthony Towns. Yeah, I'm the, I'm the worst about like uh, opening the loose box stuff myself. <laughs> I kind of wish they don't send me loose box stuff sometimes because it's like, ooh, I know I'm going to probably get in there. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. Cost me money. But what are you going to do? Oh, Jay Allen. He says Lonzo goes for a stick of gum and a dish towel. <laughs> 
All right. Well, I guess we know what your opinion is then of um, Lonzo Ball, don't we? <laughs> yeah, I haven't looked to see what his autographs sell for these days. His brother, little brother, got hurt, has been playing, I guess, wasn't it in Australia that he's playing right now in a professional league over there? So instead of uh, rehabbing and going back to finish the season there, he's going to rehab and then not do anything else until draft time. So. Guess he's been looking pretty good from what everybody says. Oh, I know. His dad really did make life hard for, for Lonzo. LeVar went just crazy, and it did make, I think, a lot of people kind of sour a little bit on Lonzo. But by all accounts, he's a pretty quiet, kind of humble guy letting his play speak for it for him. But he got off to a bit of a rocky start. Didn't really have some some great uh, games there with the Lakers too much. But I think he's doing a little better with the Pelicans. It's probably more suited to his playing style. A liftoff die cut for the Pelicans and Zion Williamson. Those, of course, are not numbered, but I think they're cool. Fractal for the Pistons. Comes another Cosmic. This will be numbered to 100. It's for the Boston Celtics with the fan favorite Taco Fall on the front. Yeah, so I'll be interested to see where uh, his brother goes in the draft. Lamelo is. I would expect he'll probably go fairly high. Seems like it's kind of early to be talking about the draft, but yet, you know, we're what? A month and a half away from, a couple months away from being in the middle of March Madness, so I guess it's not as early as it seems. College basketball season always seems to fly by. By contrast, I feel like the pros play like 364 days out of the year. <laughs> I mean, I feel like the pros are always playing. And with college basketball, it's blink and you miss it. And of course, I like watching college ball better than pro ball, so you know. There's a Rookie Revolution Fractal. It's unnumbered, but Zion on that particular insert as well. A Fractal for the Kings. A Sunburst to 75 for the Milwaukee Bucks with Eric Bledsoe. I see another liftoff die cut. And this one is Donovan Mitchell for the Jazz. Jay Allen said it was reminding Revolution that he needs something good for the Hornets and the Nuggets. All right. We're trying to remind the mojo here to get it rolling for you. Trying my best. Well, we have an autograph coming up. Oh, Kiki, we did see him last night for the Magic. I do remember that. Oh, Chuma Okiki and Orlando. I think that's our third autograph out of this second eight box enter, if I'm counting right. Which means we should have one left to find. And we haven't seen the Galactic yet either, so that always makes me nervous. Like, where is it? <laughs> have flashbacks to those one or two times when it wasn't in a master case. It better be in there. It's going to be in there. Feel good about it. We're going to find it. Hmm. 
Maybe it'll be in here. In this box. That would be nice. You know what product I miss? Prime Signatures. Do you guys remember Prime Signatures football? I think the last time we had it was in 2016. I always loved Prime Signatures. And I broke a ton of it from 2011, too, until it, the supply dried up. But we broke tons of it from that year. I broke some from 2012. I used to love Prime Signatures. We have a Jaron Jackson Jr. Galactic case hit. See, I told you I was feeling good. Like it might be in this box. And there it is. So Memphis Grizzlies, you got the case hit. I'm guessing, though, you probably wanted that to be John Morant, and I can't blame you for that, but we didn't get him. We got you Triple J instead. And Jaron's been playing well, too, though, so still nice. A Cosmic to 100, Daniel Gafford and the Bulls. Yeah, I don't know why they stopped making Prime Signatures. I guess it wasn't selling well or something, but they do that periodically. You know, they killed off Playbook for a few years and then brought it back. Lift off die cut. Wizards, I guess this is going to be Rue again, is it? Yeah. Rue Hachimura again for the Wizards. So maybe they'll bring back Prime Signatures. I didn't like Donra's signature series all that much. We had that for a few years, too. In fact, it coexisted with Prime Signatures at one point. But I would love to have just straight Prime Signatures come back. And I wouldn't mind them bringing back Crusade for basketball. We haven't had Crusade in a long time. But that was always kind of a cool little product, too. But now they just take the Crusade cards and insert them into other products. But, but I did like that one. Yeah, see, Jay Allen, I agree with you. The Prime Signatures, even though it had less hits per box, I just thought the cards were nicer and the quality was better. I always, like you, preferred it to Donra's Signature Series. Which Donra's Signature Series wasn't around, but very briefly anyway, that I remember. But Prime Signatures, of course, had been around for a while. Fractal Lakers, when they killed it off. A Fractal for the Suns. But, you know, um, is that lava? Hang on a minute. No, it's just regular. It just caught my eye funny. Like, I thought it was a different pattern. Um, they are required by their contracts, apparently. Ooh, a redemption. Could it be Zion again tonight? Would that not be something? Oh, it would be nice. We're going to set it up there. It could be. It could be Zion again. We'll see. An impact to 149 the Spurs and Lonnie Walker so their contracts require them to produce X number of products per year so the NBA the NFL Major League Baseball in the case of tops they all have contracts with these card producers and they will say you have to have however many products released in the calendar year and X number of them have to be new products so I think that's why a lot of times they'll kill off a product for a few years <laughs> and then they bring it back because then they can bring it back as a new product, you know. <laughs> so I think it's like their sneaky little way of not having to come up with quite as much new content, maybe. But yeah, so if you've ever wondered, like, why is the market flooded? Why are there so many releases, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? Well, they're contractually obligated to do it, for one thing. You 
and then inevitably we end up towards the end of the year where they're dumping out 50 million products as fast as they can to make sure they get them all out in time. <laughs> but then thankfully we usually get a little January breather. Though this year we've had more of a January breather than we normally do. I will say that. Been exceptionally slow this January release wise. Fractal for the Warriors. We're on the last box, by the way, so this is some little last box mojo time. I forgot to say that, but it is. A Brandon Clark liftoff die cut Memphis Grizzlies. And a fractal for the Cavaliers. I think I see an impact or something. Oh, it's not impact, it's um, sunburst instead to 75 for the Golden State Warriors with Clay Thompson. We might have an autograph hiding in this last box, do we? No, I just was catching the edge of something I thought it might be, but it wasn't. It was not, alas. It was not. It was a shockwave insert. All right, so um, here's what we are going to do. We're going to recap in a second our numbered cards and, of course, our autograph cards. But before we do that, we've got this fun little redemption. We're going to flip it over. We're going to see what there is on the other side. And then we'll go to the Panini website, find out what, if anything, it's numbered to, verify the team, and so on and so forth. It is not Zion tonight, but it is another one for the Pelicans, Jackson Hayes rookie autographs so maybe the pelicans players in general just are saying ah yeah we're not signing anything <laughs> like who knows weird right though a little all right let me get us to the right tab over here and what did i say our card set was just rookie autographs right yeah rookie autographs card number 10 Jackson Hayes, Pelicans, as we expected it to be. And you will see, of course, that there's no numbering over there. So it means it's an open, unnumbered edition, which is pretty typical in here. It's very, very rare if you were to pull an autograph that's numbered out of here. Most of them are open edition, unnumbered. All right, so we're going to recap it. Then we will put up shipping information one final time. And following that, we will put up what breaks are coming up in the days ahead. So all of that after we recap. If you missed any of it at the front, you can catch it here at the back end in a moment. So sunburst pattern, every time we see that, it's going to be numbered to 75. Our impacts are to 149. Cosmics are to 100. And... Galactic is our case hit, of course. There's only one of those. They're not numbered, but they're still very cool. That is Jaron Jackson Jr. for the Grizzlies. Sunburst to 75 for the Bucks. A Cosmic to 100 for the Celtics. This is Cubic to 50. It's going to Minnesota Timberwolves. To 75, the Pacers and TJ Warren. To 50, the Pelicans and Nikhil Alexander-Walker. The Pacers to 75, Victor Oladipo. The Zion Williamson Sunburst to 75 that unfortunately you can see along the bottom edge on both the front and the back is a little bit miscut. Impact to 149, LeBron James and the Lakers. Cosmic to 100 for the Bulls, Kobe White. Impact 149, Cavaliers. Cosmic 100, Trey Young and the Hawks. And nope, ignore the uniform. It is the Knicks to 149 with impact. The Suns to 149 impact. The Jazz Cubic to 50 impact to 149. The Wizards and Sunburst to 75 for the Knicks. Since we didn't hit a lot of die cuts tonight, we can spend through them too. It ended up being more than I thought, but we have the Grizzlies, the Wizards, the Jazz. None of these are numbered, but they're kind of cool. The Pelicans, Wizards again, and Wizards again, <laughs> and the Jazz. A lot of uh, Rue Hachimura die cuts in there, huh? 
Now our hits, the redemption is for the Pelicans with Jackson Hayes. Okiki for the Magic. Lonzo Ball for the Pelicans, who ended up hitting a pair of autographs in here tonight, counting the redemption. Jarrett Culver for the T-Wolves. Romeo Langford for the Celtics. The Suns have Cam Johnson. The Jazz with Adrian Dantley. And the Hawks hit Cam Reddish. All right, so there is the break and the recap. As promised, I've got some spreadsheet info coming at you again. If you missed this earlier, stay tuned. This is the info that you probably want to know about. So there is no mail service on Monday, no pickup, no delivery. So the earliest anything can go out is Tuesday. Label may be printed before then, but the package would not be picked up or out the door until Tuesday. That applies to Revolution Basketball, our paid shipping break that we just completed. I had the free shipping break tonight, which was the multi-sport jerseys. All my free shipping stuff is always projected to go out no later than a week after the break. So it means it'll be on the way to you if you hit it no later then Saturday a week from today, which will be the 25th. Most likely it's going to go sooner, probably a lot sooner, but shouldn't be later. If you got skunked in the jersey break and your letter was not the one pulled, your consolation card would typically be held to ship with your next package just because it is a free shipping break. If you want it sent sooner, just send me a message on eBay and let me know. I will take care of it for you. Now, here's what it looks like in the days ahead. Both Sunday night and Monday night will be off nights. We have no new releases coming out next week for the first time in a long time. Not a single one. On Tuesday night, we are opening three TriStar Game Changers autographed baseballs and a third master case of Revolution Basketball. Wednesday, we'll find us opening a full case of Contenders Football. Veteran Base does not ship in that break. On Thursday night, we're going to open a half case of Leaf autographed football jerseys and a fourth case of Revolution Basketball that will be another master case. On Friday night, a couple of auctions I'll plug in later. Don't have them listed yet. But what is already listed, three TriStar Series 10 autographed baseballs and another pair of Leaf autographed multi-sport jerseys. Then Saturday the 25th, which is a week from today, and Sunday the 26th, the week from tomorrow, will also be off nights. So there you go. That is all the news to use for me tonight. And since I am off for the next two nights, I will not be back on until Tuesday night. So hope that you will come see me again on Tuesday. But if I don't see you then, stop back and see me sometime. I enjoy the company. So... Have a great weekend, everyone. I will see you Tuesday. Bye now.